Welcome back ladies and gents. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 8.5 integrating vectors. 8.5 represents chapter 8, section 5 of the Pearson A-Level Maths Applied Maths Year 2 textbook. So let's start off with the facts for this particular teaching video. R squiggle represents the position vector, V squiggle represents the velocity vector, and A squiggle represents the acceleration vector. If we differentiate the position vector, we get the velocity vector. If we differentiate the velocity vector, we get the acceleration vector. Alternatively, to find the acceleration vector from the position vector, we take the position vector and we differentiate it twice. This over here, the notation represents the position vector differentiated twice. The two dots on top denote the double derivative. Okay, so now we're going to work backwards. If we take the acceleration vector and we integrate it, we get the velocity vector. If we take the velocity vector and we integrate it, we get the position vector. We'll be using these facts over here to answer exam style questions. Here is exam style question one. A particle P, ladies and gents, is moving in a plane with velocity v squiggle meters per second at time t seconds, where the velocity vector equation is given by this. t is greater than or equal to zero, and we know that t represents the time. When t is equal to two, P has position vector 9j meters with respect to a fixed origin O. Find part A, the distance of P from O when t is equal to zero. Let's decode this sentence. We know that the distance is the magnitude of the position vector. So we are trying to work out the magnitude of the position vector when t is equal to zero. To find the position vector, we have to integrate the velocity vector with respect to t, where t is time. Okay, so let's do this now. The position vector, our squiggle, is given by the integral of 3t squared plus 2 in brackets i plus 6t minus 4 in brackets j dt. So we're going to use the integration technique from year 1, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. That is the technique that you use to integrate polynomials. Right, so let's start off by integrating this term over here. That will be t cubed. This term would be 2t in bracket i. Plus, this term over here, if you integrate it, that will give you 3t squared. And this term over here, if you integrate it, that gives you 4t in brackets j plus c squiggle, the constant of integration. Now, in the question, we know that when t is equal to 2, the position vector of p is 9j meters. In other words, our squiggle is equal to 9j. So we're going to use this boundary condition in order to work out c squiggle. We can substitute this in. So we have 9j is equal to 2 cubed plus 2 times 2 plus 3 multiplied by 2 squared minus 4 multiplied by 2. Okay, so if I put this into my calculator and this into my calculator, I get the following result. 12i plus 4j plus c squiggle. So now I can take the i and j to the left hand side. This will give me c squiggle. So I've got minus 12i, 9j minus 4j is plus 5j. I've got my c squiggle, the constant of integration. I can put this back into my position vector equation. Okay, so ladies and gents, I'm going to do this now. So we have that the position vector R in full will be t cubed plus 2t i plus 3t squared minus 4t j plus the constant of integration. So that was minus 12i plus 5j. The plus and minus becomes minus. So I can just put a minus there. Right, so I can collect the i's and j's together and rewrite this as follows. I've got t cubed plus 2t, and I've also got a minus 12i, so I can put the minus 12 inside this bracket, close the bracket, and write i, okay? Plus 
3t squared minus 4t. I've also got 5j, I can put 5 inside the bracket. So plus 5, close the bracket, write j. So that there is the vector equation for the position vector. So we can put meters at the end. Now, this is the vector equation for the position vector subject to the condition that when t is equal to 2, the position vector of p is 9j meters. Right, so now we're trying to calculate the magnitude of this position vector when t is equal to 0. So we're going to substitute t is equal to 0 into this position vector equation. That gives us minus 12i uh, plus 5j meters. We're going to take the magnitude, square root, i component squared plus j component squared. And if I put this into my calculator, I get precisely 13 meters. So the distance of P from O when T is equal to zero is 13 meters. Moving on to part B of the question. Find the acceleration of P at the instant it is moving parallel to the vector I. Let's draw a coordinate grid and see what's going on. The horizontal axis is the I axis and the vertical axis is the J axis. We want our particle P to move parallel to the vector I. So the velocity vector will be in the i direction. So if the velocity vector, ladies and gents, is in the i direction, the j component of the velocity vector has to equal zero. So we know that p is moving parallel to the vector i implies that the j component of the velocity vector has to equal zero. Now, if we go back to the velocity vector, the j component is 6t minus 4. So 6t minus 4 must equal 0. We can solve this equation to give us t equal to 2 over 3 seconds. So when p is moving parallel to the vector i, t is equal to 2 over 3 seconds. We want to find the acceleration of p at this instant. So how do we work out the acceleration? Well, to find the acceleration, we have to differentiate the velocity vector with respect to time. So we are calculating dv over dt. So the acceleration vector would equal the derivative of 3t squared plus 2 is just 6t i. Plus the derivative of 6t minus 4 is 6j meters per second per second. Now we want to work out the acceleration vector when the time is 2 over 3. So when t is equal to 2 over 3, the acceleration vector is equal to 6 multiplied by 2 over 3i plus 6j. Okay, so this gives us 4i plus 6j meters per second per second. And that there, ladies and gents, completes part B of exam style question one. Here is exam style question two. At time t seconds where t is greater than or equal to zero, the particle p is moving in a plane with acceleration a squiggle meters per second per second, where the acceleration vector is given by this. When t is equal to zero, ladies and gents, the velocity of p is 2i minus 5j meters per second. Find part a, the velocity of p after t seconds. To find the velocity vector, we need to integrate the acceleration vector with respect to t. Okay, so let's do this. We have that the velocity vector is given by the integral of 5t minus 3 in bracket i plus 8 minus t in bracket j dt. So we know that when we integrate polynomials, we have to add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. This term over here integrates to 5t squared over 2 minus 3 integrates to 3t. Bracket i plus the 8 integrates to 8t minus the t integrates to t squared over 2. Close bracket j. Plus c, the constant of integration. Now we know that when t is equal to 0, 
the velocity of p, so v squiggle, is given by 2y minus 5j meters per second. So we're going to substitute this boundary condition into this vector equation to find the constant of integration. So we have that, the velocity vector is 2y minus 5j equal to, substitute t equals 0, you get 0i plus 0j plus c squiggle, the constant of integration. So c squiggle is equal to 2y minus 5j. We can put the constant of integration back into the vector equation for the velocity. So let's do this. We have that the velocity vector in full subject to this boundary condition will be 5t squared over 2 minus 3ti, okay, plus 8t minus t squared over 2j plus c squiggle, which is 2y minus 5j. We can collect the i's and j's. So for the i component, I've got 5t squared over 2 minus 3t. I can add on a2. Okay. Plus the j component, I've got 8t minus t squared over 2. I could put in minus 5 j. So that there is the velocity of p after t seconds. So to put the icing on the cake, I can stick in the unit meters per second. Moving on to the last two parts of exam style question two. Find part b the value of t for which p is moving parallel to i minus j, part c the speed of p when it is moving parallel to i minus j. Now this time we have that the velocity is parallel to i minus j. So it's not as basic as the velocity being parallel to i or the velocity being parallel to j. We've got i minus j now. So what we should do is go back to our definition of parallel vectors. First of all, the velocity vector was computed in part A of the question. It's over here. We're going to be using that result for part B and part C. Now we have that P is moving parallel to the vector I minus J. The word moving is used, so we have to be looking at the velocity vector. So the velocity vector is parallel to i minus j. By definition, the velocity vector is equal to lambda lots of i minus j. Definition of parallel vectors. Now we're going to take the velocity vector, which is this one over here, and rewrite it as a column vector for simplicity. So if we use column vectors instead, we have the following result. The i component is 5t squared over 2 minus 3t plus 2. The j component is 8t minus t squared over 2 minus 5. This must equal lambda lots of the vector i minus j, which is 1 minus 1. We can multiply the 1 and minus 1 by lambda. This gives us lambda minus lambda equal to this vector here. Okay, so now what we can do is equate the i components, equate the j components to generate two equations. So if I do this, my first equation will be 5t squared over 2 minus 3t plus 2 is equal to lambda. Equation number 1. My second equation will be 8t minus t squared over 2 minus 5 is equal to minus lambda. Equation number 2. Right, over here, I can make a lambda the subject by multiplying the whole equation by negative 1. So if I do that, I get lambda is equal to minus 8t plus t squared over 2 plus 5. This is equation 3. So we can take equation 1 and 3 and set them equal to each other. So we have that 5t squared over 2 minus 3t plus 2 is equal to minus 8t plus t squared over 2 plus 5. Okay, so now we can work out the value of t. That's what we're after. 
for which the particle P is moving parallel to I minus J. Let's take everything to one side. So if I take everything to one side and I simplify, I get the following quadratic equation. 2t squared plus 5t minus 3 is equal to 0. We can factorise this quadratic equation. So if I put it into double brackets, my factors will be 2t minus 1 and t plus 3. OK, so we get two values for t. We've got t is equal to 1 over 2 seconds or t is equal to minus 3 seconds. Reject this time, accept this time. OK, so for part A, the value of t for which p is moving parallel to i minus j is t is equal to 1 over 2 seconds. Moving on to part C, the speed of p when it is moving parallel to i minus j. So we have that p is moving parallel to i minus j. This implies that from part B, t is equal to 1 over 2. So we want to find the speed of p when t is equal to 1 over 2. We're trying to calculate the magnitude of the velocity vector when t is equal to 1 over 2. So now I can substitute t equal to 1 over 2 into my velocity vector equation. So if I do this, I get that the velocity will equal 9 over 8i minus 9 over 8j meters per second. We're going to take the magnitude of this velocity to give us the speed. So the speed when p is moving parallel to i minus j is given by the square root of the i component squared plus the j component squared. So in exact form we get 9 root 2 over 8 meters per second. If we round this off to three significant figures, ladies and gents, our answer will be 1.59 meters per second. OK, so the speed of P when it is moving parallel to I minus J is 1.59 metres per second to three significant figures. That there, ladies and gents, completes exam style question two and this teaching video. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.